Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with a review of a brand new dynamic microphone from SE Electronics. That microphone being the SE Electronics Dynacaster. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $290. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below. Also, for this review, I'm running the microphone directly into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. 48 volts phantom power is on. My gain is set at around 11 o'clock. Recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. Neutral EQ mode on the microphone and the dynamite is engaged. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now, let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course, you are going to get the microphone. You'll get a big fat foam windscreen, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a little bit of documentation, and a couple of stickers. I hate stickers. Urgh. 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 I don't even want to talk about the fact that I was unable to rip the sticker, so let's go ahead and move on. But as far as the build quality, I have no complaints about this thing. It feels incredibly robust. It has an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill, which has no give to it. And talking about the grill, you are able to dismantle it in multiple places so that you can clean it a little bit easier or you can close mic a guitar cab if that's what you want to do. Then you have this mount on the rear of the mic, which is made out of metal. The knob to tighten it down though is made out of plastic. If we look at the end of the mount, you will find 5 8 inch threading to mount this to a mic stand, as well as the XLR port. Then on the rear of the microphone, you'll find three switches. The first one allowing you to turn on a low shelf or engage a high pass filter. Another being the third allows you to engage a slight high shelf or a much more aggressive high shelf. And the final switch, which is in the middle, allows you to turn on or off the internal microphone activator or preamp. And finally, as far as manufacturing location, if it matters to you, this microphone is made in China. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 Hz to 19 kHz, a sensitivity of around negative 54 dB without the dynamite engaged, or negative 24 dB with the dynamite engaged, and it has an impedance of negative 300 ohms without the dynamite engaged, or 135 ohms with the dynamite engaged. Now I am spinning around the Dynacaster to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees. Here's the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are, and then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now we're going to see how well this microphone rejects plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. 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 Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about three inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. Now we're about one foot away from the Dynacaster, about two feet away from the Dynacaster, and about four feet away from the SE Electronics Dynacaster. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for all of the gaming folk of the Elite variety, now I am typing on the sad W and the spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room with the dynamite engaged and the EQ switches in neutral. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room on the neutral EQ setting. And now to see how effective the internal shock mounting system is, I'll go ahead and tap on my desk to see how much of that it can reject. And then I'll tap on the boom arm. And now to be thorough and a bit annoying, I'm going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies.
Now we're going to see how the provided foam windscreen impacts the sound of the recording. Currently, I'm a couple inches off of the mic in neutral mode. I do not have the foam windscreen installed, and here is how it's sounding. And now I have the provided big fat foam windscreen installed, and here is how it's sounding. I do believe that I hear a bit of a roll off in the higher frequencies, which is what you would expect with such a massive piece of foam between you and the diaphragm of the microphone. And just for good measure, here is how the mic sounds without the foam windscreen again. And again, here is how it sounds with the provided foam windscreen. And another quick plosive test, please bring pizza pronto, please bring pizza pronto, please bring pizza pronto, please bring pizza pronto. First up, we'll start in the neutral mode. I do not have a low shelf or a low cut, and I do not have the high shelf engaged, and here is how it's sounding. Now I've engaged the low cut filter, and here is how it's sounding. Back again with the neutral low end, and here is how it sounds. And now I've engaged the low shelf, and here is how it's sounding. Okay, back in the neutral mode, and here is how it sounds. And now I've engaged that first high shelf filter, which adds a little bit more of a subtle high shelf, and here's how it's sounding. And finally, this is the most aggressive high shelf filter. I think it's about 8 dB of a boost, but here is how it sounds. Again, we are back in the neutral mode just as a palate cleanser, and here is how it's sounding. Now I have the low shelf engaged or the low boost engaged, as well as the first high shelf filter. I imagine this is going to be what a lot of people enjoy, a little bit more of a smiley face, a little bit more of a V-shaped sound, low boost and first high shelf filter. And now I still have that low shelf filter engaged, but now I've engaged that second high shelf filter, which is about an 8 to 10 dB boost really bright sound but that low shelf does offset it a little bit now i want to see if the dynamite circuit affects the sound of the recording so currently i have the dynamite engaged 48 volts on and my gain is set at 11 o'clock on the 18i20 and here is how it's been sounding and now i've disabled the dynamite circuit and increased my gain to 100 percent on the 18i20 and here is how it compares. Let me know in the comments down below, do you hear a difference in sound between the microphone with the dynamite and without the dynamite, or does it remain pretty consistent? Now, like we always do, we're going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones that are available on the market so we can see how it stacks up against the competition and because this has so many different EQ settings, it would be impossible to compare them all. So I'm just leaving it in the neutral mode and using that as the basis for the comparison. We'll start on the mic that we're reviewing. This is the Dynacaster, three inches off, 48 volts on, gain at 11 o'clock, neutral EQ and dynamite engaged, and here is how it's sounding. Now we are on the Behringer XM8500. This goes for about $25. I am three inches off, 48 volts is off. My gain is set at around four o'clock on the 18i20. And here is how it sounds. Let's do more comparisons. Back again, and here is how the Dynacaster sounds. Nothing has changed. Let's jump to another mic. Now we are on one of the most famous microphones of all time, the Shure SM58. This goes for $100. I am three inches off. Gain at around 430. And here is how it compares to the Dynacaster. Let's do more of these things. Just to act as a palate cleanser, here is how the Dynacaster sounds. Let's do another comparison. Now we are on the SE Electronics V7, which is their handheld dynamic. Three inches off. Gain at 430. This costs around $120, so about $150 cheaper than the Dynacaster. And here is how it sounds. Let's jump back to the Dynacaster. In case you forgot how I sound, here is how the Dynacaster sounds. Nothing has changed. Let's jump to another microphone. Now we are on the Rode Procaster, which is Rode's broadcast dynamic mic. This goes for about $230. I am three inches off. This does not have any switches on it. My gain is still set at 430. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post. And let's jump back to the Dynacaster. All right, we're back on the Dynacaster for a fifth comparison, I think. And here's how it's sounding. Let's jump to another mic, right? Now I am on the Electro Voice RE320, which costs $10 more than the Dynacaster, 300 bucks, three inches off of this thing, 
gain set at around 345. I do not have the kick drum switch engaged, and here is how this compares. Again, we're back on the Dynacaster, nothing has changed, why would it? And here's how it sounds, let's jump to another mic. Now we are on the Shure SM7B, which goes for about $400. I have the EQ switches set to neutral. My gain is set at 100%. I am about three inches off of the capsule of this thing. And here is how this compares to the Dynacaster, which is $110 cheaper. Okay, let's do four more, I think. Four or five, I don't know. Let's do more. We have a couple more to go, but before we jump to the next one, here is how the Dynacaster sounds. Let it fill your ear holes with all the glory that be, and let's jump to another microphone. What am I saying? Now we are on the Electro Voice RE20. This goes for about $450. I am three inches off. My gain is set at 430, and here is how this compares to the SE Electronics Dynacaster. Let's jump back and do three more comparisons. All right, I think we have two more to go. This is the Dynacaster. Let's jump to the penultimate microphone right now. Now we are on the Earthworks Ethos, which is a broadcast condenser microphone. This costs around $700. I am three inches off of this thing. My gain is set at 12 o'clock, 48 volts on, and here is how this compares to the Dynacaster. Let's jump back to it. Would you be surprised if I told you that we were on the SE Electronics Dynacaster right now so you can hear it before we jump to another microphone, which is what we're going to do. Second to last microphone, we are on the Sennheiser MD441U. This dynamic microphone goes for $1,000. I do not have the high shelf engaged, but I do have the high pass filter in the first position, so just a slight roll off in the low end. Did I say $1,000? three inches off, gain at 430, and here is how this compares to the Dynacaster. Let's do one more. And you all know what the final microphone is going to be, but first up, this is the Dynacaster, nothing has changed, three inches off, 48 volts, gain at 11 o'clock, neutral EQ setting, and here's how it sounds. Let's jump to the final mic. And you all knew what the final microphone was going to be. We are on the Neumann U87AI, this costs $3,600. It's a multi-pattern studio condenser microphone. Not a fair comparison. Cardioid mode, no high pass filter. 48 volts on, gain at 11 o'clock, and here is how it sounds. That's it. Those are the comparisons. Let me know in the comments down below which of these microphones was your favorite, and let us jump to the music test. <laughs> If I had another mic, which would it be? And could we find out which is the best? Which is the best? Which of the mics would beat out the rest? Let's find out. I glided down but I did it, intentional, did it intentionally so that I am unable to unintentionally glide down to the last note. I win, brain. I have logicked my way out of not being able to hit the final note because I did it on purpose this time. As I clip the microphone, let's go to the conclusion because I won. All right, I think that SE has released a really outstanding new offering among the studio and broadcast dynamic microphone realm. And first up, as far as pros, it has to be the versatility of this thing. With those EQ switches, you can get such a broad range of sounds out of this thing. You can go from getting a darker SM7B style sound to a really overly bright RE320 sound. 
I think that with those switches, almost anybody is going to be able to find a sound that they like out of this microphone. Also with that built-in dynamite, which is a mic activator or preamp, that means that this microphone will work on pretty much any audio interface or preamp, as long as the preamp or interface has 48 volts phantom power, and lastly, as far as plosive rejection, I found that it did a very respectable job. At certain angles, you will still be able to pop it, but in general, compared to a lot of its competitors, I think it does a very nice job at plosive rejection. Then as far as the cons for this microphone, I am going to be a bit nitpicky here. Personally, I don't mind it, but I know some people will absolutely hate the placement of the XLR port because it might limit the rotation on their boom arm. Also, I did notice that a bit of low end rumble made it in when I bumped on my desk or on the boom arm. And to get extremely nitpicky, I found it quite difficult to read and see the switches on the rear of the microphone because they are sunken in a little bit. I had to grab a flashlight and it was still hard. I think adding a bit of white paint to the line on the actual switch would make it a much better user experience. And then as far as my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone, on the electric guitar, I was able to get some tones that I really enjoyed. I found that it had a tight bottom or a tight low end. <laughs> I don't think I can word that in a worse way. The mids come across slightly more forward, but they are still incredibly smooth. And then the mic captures a bunch of top end information in a really nice and pleasing fashion. And you can go from a pretty neutral top end with a little bit of that information to just extremely aggressive with that high shelf button on there. Then on the acoustic guitar, I found that I liked it a bit more than a lot of dynamics that I've tried. The low end was nice and controlled, the mids were inoffensive, not overly forward, not scooped, and then the top end came across a bit livelier than a lot of dynamics. It's not going to be condenser-like, I wouldn't say that, but it does have a bit more detail and a bit more extension there, and if you want to throw on the second high boost, it will give you a lot of articulation and detail there. Not going to be condenser-like, but really nice for a dynamic. Next up for singing, again, I thought it worked really well for this application. The low end was not problematic here at all. It wasn't muddy, it wasn't overpowering. It does come across a little bit more mid-forward. If you want that V-shape, you can get it with that low boost and the high shelves. And then the top end, you can go from that darker sound, that smoother sound, to that really bright and airy and shimmery sound that I demonstrated when I turned on that second high shelf boost, which really brought the microphone to life and added a bit of shimmer to it. I imagine a lot of people are going to love that setting when they're putting their vocals in a full mix because it will make the vocals pop, sound a bit more lively, and I would be more than happy to use this for singing vocals. And lastly, for spoken word, I enjoy how much variation you can get out of this thing. I was getting sounds that I would say are similar to the SM7B, all the way up to the brightness of the RE320. It does offer a really nice and robust and full bass and body. I do think that it comes across a bit more mid-forward than a lot of dynamics that I compared it against. I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think it comes across overly nasally, but it is a bit more mid-forward. And then you get a nice extension into the treble and air on this thing, and you can dial that into a more neutral, just slightly more lively, or to a overly boosted, very alive sounding top end on this thing if you use the second high shelf. But in all of those settings, I do think that it handles sibilance rather well, and I was pretty impressed by that. And to wrap up, would I recommend the SE Electronics Dynacaster? Absolutely I would. As a general purpose studio dynamic microphone, I think it's outstanding. I was able to get usable tones that I enjoyed out of everything that I threw it at. So if you're looking for a general purpose studio dynamic microphone, I think this is a great place to look and competes well with the SM7B and the RE20. 
And then for spoken word, I think this is going to check a lot of boxes on a lot of people's requirements list because it gives you that dynamic sound. It gives you the versatility to get that darker, smoother sound or that really bright and alive sound. It also offers that inbuilt mic activator or dynamite, which I think is going to be a big draw for a lot of people because that means they can buy the microphone, they don't need to get a cloud lifter or fet head, and it's going to work on the majority, if not all, interfaces and preamps, assuming that it does have 48 volts phantom power, I think for spoken word, this is a really great contender and will make sense for a lot of people. So if you enjoy the tone of this over something like the SM7B or the RE20, I don't think you can really go wrong with it. All right, that's all that I've got for you today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, big ol' thumbs down. These people over here are amazing. I love you. Have a great day. I'm not gonna keep talking. Bye.